Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech here talking about the Onslaught fetches coming back into standard. Super exciting news. This was announced at the PAX party this last weekend here in Seattle. I cannot tell you how happy I am. This is a huge boon to some decks. Some decks like Zoo were clearly missing these lands. They become significantly better with these lands in the modern environment. Blood Boon is going to be slightly worse because it definitely benefited from people not being able to fetch certain basics in their deck. Does this mean that it's going to drop in price? No. It's probably going to stay stable or go up in price because the modern format is going to be much more popular with fetch lands available at the $10 to $20 range. Also, the Zendikar fetches will be less useful at this point, but they're still some of the best lands ever printed. So they're not going to really see a drop in price until they see a reprint. You'll see people trying to trade them away to pick up some of the new ones that they need for their decks to improve their decks. Some cards got significantly better. Anything in Standard that has access to Delve is much better knowing that the fetch lands are in there and Courser has started to shoot through the roof because of this announcement. Courser turns Fetchlands into a life gain engine that also gives you card selection. Courser could become a modern Brainstorm-like effect. It's already seeing some play in Rock that is also in standard. This is just a powerhouse in standard. This type of card selection hasn't been around since we had Ponder in standard. The temples also get significantly better with fetch lands. I didn't realize this until I read Sean McLaren's article. I thought that the temples would just crash in price. I still don't think the temples are very playable in modern. Maybe the temple of malady is. But in standard, you're able to use them to put things that you don't want on the bottom of your deck early game, and then use a fetch land to reshuffle your deck mid or late game to bring those cards back forward. I really like this synergy. It's going to be a very skill-intensive land set. That set of coursers, Red Deck Wins gets a big benefit out of this. Taking damage from fetches helps aggro decks, and you're going to see a lot of people using these fetch lands in standard. I would definitely pull out an aggro deck early on until you decide what type of deck you want to play and take advantage of individuals being too greedy on their mana base. Not all fetches are created equal. To get fetches right now, you're going to be looking at spending between $15 and $25 for them. Uh, most places have started with the same price scheme that we're looking at over at Card Kingdom, $20 for the non-blues, $25 for the blues. Long term, if I bought a bunch of these at $25, I would not feel bad. Now, they could drop in price to that $8 to $15 range, especially if they end up in event decks, uh, but long term, they will go back up in price, so pre-ordering them and getting them out of the way is not a bad idea at all. Now, you've got to remember that they're not all created equal, though. Polluted and flooded will be worth the most long term. Polluted is a staple in Shardless Bug and Bug Delver, along with Storm. Just an incredible card. It even sees play in Vintage. It will always be the most expensive fetch land because it is driving those really expensive decks, and the foil of it will be incredibly sought after. Uh, Flooded Strand is a really nice addition in Modern and could easily be worth as much as Polluted while it's in Standard. It, very, very nice. Windswept Heath and Wooded Foothills are needed for that Zoo deck and for your Pod decks. Very, very good cards. They're going to be your Tier 2. Bloodstained Mire has always been the runt of the Fetchlands in Legacy and is still the runt of the Fetchlands in Modern, may see some play in Standard, depending on what type of aggro decks are out there. So I would watch it closely, but I do not think 
that Bloodstained Mire is going to be worth that initial $20. I would wait until this card hits 10 or maybe even 7 to pick up a bunch of them. I feel good about getting the blue ones. I feel okay about getting the off ones right away. I don't feel good about Bloodstained Mire, and I'm actually going to be avoiding it early on. What does this mean for the shocks? Well, right now, the shocks are going to stay pretty level in price, maybe even a small price down as they rotate out. Why? Because money is a zero-sum game, and people want to spend their money on fetches. Fetches are purely better than shocks. Now, as people start to jump into modern long-term, we will see these shocks raise, and by summer next year, I'm guessing that all of the shocks will double in price. So I'm holding my shocks, I'm not getting rid of them to buy fetches, but I'm not expecting to see a giant price jump until we get to next summer. Other staples are starting to shoot up already. Even cards like Blood Moon that get slightly worse will be going up. Snapcaster Mage is probably the next to jump up. Aggro cards like Boros Charm or staples like Birthing Pod will continue to go up as people get into modern and they get excited about playing this hopefully very accessible eternal format. By summer we'll see them level out and most of these cards will drop whenever they're reprinted. The exception there might be Snapcaster. Blue cards have this weird blue tax with them that keeps them at a higher value than other things. Mythics will not follow this same curve. Today, they will start going up, and they're not going to stop going up until we get to summer, because they're incredible just amazing and the supply on them is much lower people's attachment to them is much higher even reprints are only barely affecting the value of modern staples because the format is growing faster than the cards are out there if we see a modern masters 2 next summer with modern gps on two or three continents the curve could be even much higher here Liliana the Veil, I'm predicting, will pass Jace the Mind Sculptor as the most valuable planeswalker within the next two years. It's very important to choose the right fetches, as I pointed out in my last video. The addition of Flooded Strand changes the calculus. The addition of these lands changes the calculus on every deck. If you see a deck from a few months ago, you need to go back through that deck and decide what fetches should I really be playing in those decks. What is the right mana base? Make sure that you can fetch all of your basic lands and that you have the right distribution to be able to do that. I'm going to do a whole video with tips on playing fetch lands. So these are just some minor things that have come up already, but look for that video in the future. There's a big question that people are asking me is, do I buy boxes or do I buy singles? Almost always I answer buy singles over buy boxes. This set may be the exception. I think you can get away with, from an investment perspective, either buying packs and boxes or buying the very, very high demand fetches. I would avoid bloodstained, as I said. I would go for the blue fetches and maybe the off color fetches. Uh, but the price and value of boxes is actually looking really good at this point. We just need three or four more solid eternal spoiled cards to make it worth buying boxes, cracking boxes, trading away everything you don't need, and just keeping the cards you need. You're also kind of playing a little bit of a lottery there because the foil fetches are going to be worth a lot and I'm going to be trading for all of them that I can possibly get over the next 18 months. If they drop in price down to what the shocks did, there's no reason not to pick them up. Even if they hover at that like $40, $50 range, long term those are going to be great investments as people get into this new growing eternal format of modern. Thanks. This has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing my reactions to the Fetchland reprints. I also want to say thank you to everybody who's out there on Patreon. I've got some great people here following the channel, commenting. I'd love to have a few more of you out over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I do previews to all of my slides up there so you get the first shot at seeing this content. 
you also will get exclusive access to a Google Hangout, which I am starting this month. 